In this video, we're going to be looking at topic 1A, states of matter, and we're going to be focusing on the single science outcomes as part of the IGCSE chemistry course from Edexcel. So we need to look at the three states of matter in terms of their arrangement, their movement and the energy of the particles. We're also going to look at the interconversions between the three states of matter, not only by their name, but also by the changes in energy. And we're also going to look at the results of experiments involving the dilution of coloured solutions and the diffusion of gases and how we can explain these. So we know that there are three states of matter. You will have learned this back in key stage three, most likely in year seven. So we know that we have solids, liquids and gases. And each state of matter has a specific arrangement of the particles. They have a specific energy and the movement which helps explain the properties. So we can see in the solid here that all of our particles are packed tightly into one space. They are all touching each other and with a liquid, they have a little bit more space to move around, whereas with a gas, we can see that they have lots of space in between the particles. So for solids, because they are packed closely together and arranged regularly, they don't have space to move. So they will vibrate around fixed positions, meaning they simply just vibrate on the spot. They also then have strong forces of attraction, which hold them together. With liquids, they are mostly touching, but there are some gaps that will appear. That means that they can move more freely past each other, so they can slide over one another. And the forces of attraction in a liquid are weaker than in a solid, so the particles are not arranged regularly. They are now arranged a lot more randomly. For gases, the particles are much further apart and they do not touch. They move randomly at very high speeds in all directions and there are almost no forces of attraction between our particles. So that should just be a recap from what you learned in key stage three. Now we need to look at the interconversions between the different states of matter. So if we firstly look at between solids and liquids, the temperature at which a solid changes to a liquid is known as its melting point. And the temperature at which the liquid changes back into a solid is its freezing point. So for example, water we know will melt from a solid into a liquid at zero degrees. It will also then go from water into ice at zero degrees. And we call it the melting or the freezing point, just depending on which conversion it is that we have. If you heat a solid, the particles are going to start to vibrate even more than they already do. And eventually they start to vibrate so much that they move apart and then they change into a liquid. So when we're going from a solid to a liquid in terms of melting, we are putting energy in to make the particles move further apart. When we are cooling it, when, or in other words, freezing, the energy is taken out and it means that the particles come closer together and get more regularly arranged. Going from a liquid to a gas, or from a gas to a liquid, again, it is also to do with the amount of energy that is either put in or taken out. So when we're going from a liquid to a gas, there are two things, or two words that people will use, and they tend to use them interchangeably, even though they're not. So first of all, we have boiling. So boiling occurs when a liquid is heated very strongly and it's heated so strongly that the particles vibrate so much and move so much that they overcome all of those forces of attraction and completely separate. Now a word that some people will use similarly would be evaporation but there is a difference between boiling and evaporation so we cannot use the words interchangeably. Evaporation happens when some of the fast moving particles at the top of a liquid overcome the attractive forces and escape. So whilst there is still some heating going on and the particles moving apart and escaping so that they're no longer touching, boiling involves heating all of the particles. Evaporation only happens at the surface of a liquid. Therefore, it does take much longer. If we have the particles being cooled from a gas into a liquid, they're going to move closer together and they're going to start touching each other and being able to slide past, but being a little bit less random and having more particles in one area. And we call this condensation. 
Now, a very small number of substances can actually change directly from a solid to a gas without involving any liquid. So they completely bypass the liquid stage. And the conversion of a solid to a gas is known as sublimation. A common substance that does this is carbon. Carbon will sublimate from a solid into a gas at a very high temperature. We can also go the other way where we have the gas then turning back straight into a solid and that is known as deposition. And an example as we said is either carbon or even carbon dioxide and you've probably seen at some point with carbon dioxide or dry ice going from the solid and turning straight into a gas and that is our sublimation. Now we're going to look at diffusion. So you'll have met diffusion again back in key stage three and you will also cover diffusion in terms of biology at IGCSE, but the definition is largely the same. So diffusion is the spreading out of particles from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. So if, for example, you take a room and you spray an air freshener in one corner of the room, eventually the particles from that air freshener will start to spread throughout the entire room so that you would be able to smell it no matter where you are standing. But that does take time and that process of the particles moving over time is known as diffusion. Now diffusion can only happen in gases and in liquids because the particles in those substances are free to move. Diffusion is not possible in a solid because the particles are fixed in place. So if we have something like the example at the bottom here, we have our pink molecules which have, could be a, um, a specific substance, maybe dropped into water, or it could be a substance being sprayed in a, in a room. And those particles at the start are all very close together, whereas the blue particles are all spread out. Eventually, after diffusion, the pink particles and the blue particles will become randomly mixed. So the pink particles are spreading all throughout the blue particles and we get a nice mix of the two together. Now a common experiment that we do to show this is the experiment shown here. So we have a glass tube that contains cotton wool soaked in ammonia solution, which is our NH3 at one end, and then cotton wool soaked in concentrated hydrochloric acid, which is the HCl at the other end. Now, both of these things, when they are liquid, can then evaporate and turn into a gas, and the vapours can then travel along the tube. And what we notice is we start to see this white ring forming in the tube. And what that white ring is, is the salt ammonium chloride. And that is that solid. So we're going from the gas and we are getting that deposition of ammonium chloride solid forming on the white tube. Now what we notice as well is that the white ring forms closer to the hydrochloric acid end. And that is all to do with the mass of each of the substances. Ammonia, when you work out its relative formula mass, is 17. When you work out the relative formula mass of hydrogen chloride or hydrochloric acid, it is 36.5. So what we see is that the lighter particles can move further. So the lighter ammonia particles are going to move further than the heavier hydrochloric acid particles. But this proves that diffusion happens because our two substances are complete opposite ends of the tube, yet somehow they can meet in the middle and form this ammonium chloride salt. So this is just an explanation of what we just said there. So the hydrochloric acid and the turns into the hydrogen chloride gas. The ammonia gas vapors are then going to join that and they're going to react to form this white solid. The gas particles are diffusing along the tube and the solid is going to form closer to the hydrogen chloride because the ammonia particles are lighter, so they're going to travel further. You may also see this diagram and or sorry, this experiment in class where you're looking at usually potassium permanganate in water. Potassium permanganate has a nice purple colour to it. 
And when you add it in, it will diffuse through the water that we can see here. So this is when it has first been added, where you can see that water at the top still looks clear, but you can see at the bottom. And over time, we get the purple colour spreading throughout the water until we get that fully purple solution. Now, what we see when we actually look at the diffusion process is that diffusion happens slower in liquids than it does to gases. And this is because the particles don't move as fast. The particles in a liquid move much slower than they do in, um, in a gas. So when the potassium permanganate is added to water, the purple colour will diffuse throughout or will spread throughout it, but it could take up to days, depending on how large your water sample is, for the colour to fully spread and be a nice even mix. So because the particles in a liquid are much closer together, it's difficult for the potassium permanganate particles to get in amongst the water particles. So it just takes that little bit longer for them to spread out without having to actually collide with each other. Whereas in gases, the particles are much farther apart, so diffusion happens much faster. So let's finish off by looking at some past paper questions on the states of matter. So when a liquid evaporates at room temperature, it changes into a gas, and the diagram shows the arrangement of the particles in a liquid. We want to complete the diagram to show the arrangement of at least four particles in a gas. So we need to have four separate circles all spread out from each other no touching something like that and please make sure that you do read the question and you read how many particles they want they do not want five six seven or one or two they want four and i know that's a silly thing to say but that is one thing that people will trip up on because they don't read the question carefully for another mark, we want to then describe the movement of the particles in a gas, which is fairly straightforward. They move freely and randomly. So the particles can move about any direction they want at any speed and they move around very freely, not touching each other. And then for two marks, explain why heating a liquid causes it eva to evaporate more quickly. So remember, the difference between evaporating and boiling is all to do with how many particles you're heating. If you start to heat it, you're going to evaporate it more quickly. Why is that? Well, first of all, when you heat something, the energy of the particles increases. That's the whole point in heating something. You want to increase the energy of the particles. And therefore, more particles have enough energy to escape. Okay, so remember, it's all about escaping the liquid and then being able to move freely and become a gas. So when we heat a liquid, we're giving it more energy and the particles then have enough energy to escape. And there we can see the mark scheme for those questions. One more past paper question. So we have a kettle of boiling water and as the water vapour cools, it turns into droplets of liquid water. The change in state when the water vapour changes into liquid water is described as, so this is going from our gas to our liquid and that is known as condensation for one mark. And then for part B, describe what happens when water vapour cools to form liquid water. And the answer should include information about the change in energy, arrangement or movement. Three marks, three different sections. So, of course, we want one point for each of them. So the change in energy as we are going from, remember, a gas to a liquid. So the particles lose kinetic energy, meaning they move around less or they move um, slower. Their change in arrangement, well, the particles move closer together or they become more packed, they pack more closely, the gaps become smaller, anything like that. And then in terms of the change in movement, the particles move less freely or randomly.
So as we're going from a gas to a liquid, we're losing kinetic energy. So the particles move around a lot less and they then start to move closer together or pack together. Three marks, one mark per point there. And there we have the past paper question answer from the mark scheme there. That's everything for topic 1A, states of matter in terms of the single science. If you do have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment below and we hope to see you back soon.